All right, friends. Today, Tuesday's appetizer, we again are going to be circling the prime numbers. And like I said yesterday, a prime number is any number that only has one and itself as factors. So it's going to be helpful, and you can also use a multiplication chart to help you with this, but you're going to need to look at each number and decide what numbers can I multiply together to get that number. So I know that I can multiply 1 times 6, and I know that I can do 2 times 3 to get 6, so that is not a prime number. I would do the same thing for 8. 1 times 8, 2 times 4, not a prime number. 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 5 not a prime number. 11, 1 times 11 is the only thing that I can do for 11, so I'm going to circle 11. It is a prime number. 13, 1 times 13 is the only thing I can do, so I'm going to circle 13. 14, 1 times 14, and 2 times 7. It is not a prime number. We had 21 on yesterday's um, appetizer, and we know that its factors are 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. So it is not a prime number. 25, if I look at my multiplication chart, I know that 5 times 5, and then there's always going to be 1 times the number. So that is not a prime number. 27, same, same thing. I know I can do 3 times 9 and 1 times 27. So in this case, the only prime numbers are 11 and 13. Multiplication today, again, I'm going to use the box method to help me organize my multiplication. I'm going to need four boxes because it is a two-digit by two-digit. I'm going to break 32 down into 30 and 2. I'm going to break 54 up into 50 and 4. First, I'm going to do 50 times 30. That's a big number, so I know that I can't find that on my multiplication chart, but I can do 5 times 3, and I know that 5 times 3 is 15, and I have two zeros. So I'm going to add those two zeros. Then I'm going to have 50 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. I still need to add that additional zero from the 50, because it is 10 more. So that makes it 100. Then I have 30 times 4. 3 times 4, I can find that on my multiplication chart, is 12. And then I have one zero there, so it makes it 120. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Final step which I think is the most difficult step, is making sure we line up our addition. So I have 1,500, 100, 120, and 8. I'm going to add those up. It's going to give me my answer. 5, 6, 7, 1,728. Okay? Long division. Again, I'm going to use the box method. So I have a three-digit number that I'm going to need three columns. I have 6, I have 7, 9, and 1. Using my multiplication chart, 6 goes into 7. I know that 7 is bigger than 6, so it will go into it. I know that I can multiply 6 times 1. That gives me 6. So remember, my answers go in the attic. So this is going to be 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Subtract. It's 1. Move the 1 up next to the 9. 6 goes into 19. I know I can multiply 3 times 6 and get 18. Subtract to get 1. Move it up. 6 goes into 11. Move it one time. 6 times 1 is 6. When I subtract, I get 5. So 131 remainder, 5. Okay? Be sure that when you're doing your long division, whether you're choosing the traditional or you're using this box method, that you follow the steps of divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and then we keep repeating until we have used all of our digits. Okay? So after you've checked to work here, we're going to flip to the next page. And on the next page, we have lines, and when I say lines, I mean perpendicular, parallel, and intersecting lines. You're going to see that we have a nice fancy little table here at the top that's going to tell you what each of those line descriptions means. So, for example, parallel lines, and you may already have some um, schema or some information with regard to this, are two lines that are moving in the same direction, and they are never, ever, ever, ever going to intersect. 
So if I would keep drawing this line out, these two lines would never cross. So those are considered parallel lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect, and when they intersect, they form four right angles. They form right angles. Okay, so you're going to see each of these angles is a 90 degree angle, which is a right angle. And then finally, intersecting lines are lines that cross each other, but they don't form a right angle. So yes, these lines cross, and yes, there's some angles, but they're not 90 degrees. Okay, so look, using this table, you're going to go down below, and you're going to classify, and classify means that you're going to write on the line whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or intersecting. Okay, so you're going to write it there on the line. When you have finished that, be sure that you've completed your MovieMax assignments for the day. And then there also will be some games on Google Classroom for you to complete to help work on perpendicular, parallel, and intersecting lines.